In this video we will delve into the anatomy of the female urethra, the terminal portion of the female urinary system. We will start with an introduction to the female urethra providing its major role in the normal course of micturition. Following that, we will focus on the descriptive anatomy of the female urethra, mainly, its short pelvic and perineal course. Next, we will take a closer look at the layered structure of its wall and its sphincter, the sphincter of the urinary continence. We will, then, explore the anatomical relations of each of its distinct parts. Afterwards, we will proceed to describe the blood and nerve supply and lymph drainage of the female urethra. The female urethra is a muscular membranous duct. It extends from the neck of the bladder to the external urethral meters in the vestibule of the vulva. The female urethra is not simply in front of the vagina but is embedded within the vaginal wall. It has a particularly short course and plays a major role in micturition, urine excretion. The female urethra is 4 cm long and has an internal diameter of 7 mm with an important compliance. The functional length of the urethra is the length involved in urinary continence, thus, it corresponds to the supradiaphragmatic portion, above the urethral sphincter, and is 3 cm long. With the urethra being such a short straight tube, catheterization in the female is simple compared with the male, but it must be remembered that in the later stages of pregnancy the urethra may be considerably stretched so that the catheter may have to be passed for more than twice the normal distance. The pubic symphysis lies in front, the full-term fetal head can compress the urethra against it, and the vaginal stretching during birth can increase the urethral length to 10 cm. The bladder at the lower angle of the trigone to the external urethral meters in the vestibule of the vagina in front of the vaginal orifice and 2.5 cm behind the clitoris. The external meters is the least dilatable part of the urethra. The female urethra has an oblique axis downwards and forwards forming the posterior urethrophysical angle of a hundred degree with the base of the bladder. As it leaves the bladder, fibers of the pubovaginalis part of levator ani lie adjacent to it embedding it to the vaginal wall through the vesicovaginal septum. Thus, all except its uppermost end is embedded within the vaginal wall. In the female urethra, there is no internal urethral sphincter. The urethral sphincter is external to the urethra and is thickest near the middle of it. Delving into the structure of the female urethra, we will begin by examining its wall. Secondly, we will study the urethral sphincter. On one hand, the urethral wall is made of four layers and is four millimeters thick. From the inner to the outer layer, the mucous membrane is lined by transitional epithelium. Its lamina propria contains the urethral glands resulting from the invagination of the epithelium and a rich venous plexus similar to the corpus spongiosum. The urethral glands have a mucous secretion that has a protective role against urine. Macroscopically, it is pinkish and contains longitudinal folds. The median posterior fold is the most visible and is constant even when the urethra is dilated and constitutes the urethral crest. The urethral lacunae are depressions scattered through the mucous membrane and constitute the openings of the urethral glands. The urethral muscle is continuous with the vesicle muscle, the inner layer is longitudinal and the outer layer is circular. The outer layer is the adventitia. It is a thin layer of lax connective tissue and is continuous with the vesicle fascia and the superior and inferior fascia of orogenital diaphragm and, thus, is absent in the diaphragmatic part of the urethra. On the other hand, the urethral sphincter is a made of circular skeletal muscle fibers schematically divided into two muscles, the compressor urethri muscle and the urethrovaginal muscle. It circles the urethra outside the visceral muscle and is thickest near the middle and in front than at the sides or back and two centimeters high. The compressor urethri is made of transverse fibers attached to the pubic rami and the urethrovaginal is made of circular fibers circling the urethra and arched fibers attached to the perineal body and the lateral walls of the vagina. It is supplied by the perineal nerve. As the female urethra is a pelviperineal organ, 
The study of its anatomical relations requires diving it into three distinct parts in addition to the external urethral meatus as a component of the vulva. The supradiaphragmatic part is in contact with the retropubic vinous plexus in the retropubic space of Rhetius and is fixed to it by the pubophysical ligaments. Outside, it is cradled between the pubovaginales part of levatorani muscles and is in contact with the anterior recess of the isurectal fossa. Backwards, the urethra is not only in contact but embedded in the anterior wall of the vagina. The diaphragmatic part of the female urethra is surrounded, in the deep perineal space, by the urethral sphincter and, thus, is in contact, forwards, with the compressor urethri muscle and the transverse perineus ligament and, laterally, with the urethrovaginal muscle and the dorsal artery and nerve of clitoris. It is fixed to the erogenital diaphragm by its superior and inferior fascia, the latter also known as the perineal membrane. The infradiaphragmatic part lies in the superficial perineal space between the clitoris, dorsal vein of clitoris and the expansion of suspensory ligament of clitoris, forwards, the paroretheral glands, bulbs of vestibule and crus of clitoris, laterally, and the anterior vaginal wall, backwards. The external urethral meatus is situated in the urethral portion of the vaginal vestibule between, in front, the glands of clitoris and the frenulum of clitoris, at the back, the urethral carina of vagina and, outside, the paroretheral glands and their ostia at 5 and 7 o'clock 5 mm away. The supradiaphragmatic part is supplied by branches of the vaginal, uterine and inferior vesicle arteries. The perineal part of the female urethra is supplied by the urethral branch of the internal pudendal artery. The veins of the female urethra drain to the vesicle and vaginal plexuses and the veins of the bulb of vestibule which flow into the internal pudendal vein. The lymphatics of the female urethra drain into the external and internal iliac nodes. The nerves of the female urethra are provided from the inferior hypogastric plexus. The urethral sphincter is supplied by the perineal nerve a branch of the pudendal nerve. In a nutshell, the female urethra is a short pelvic and perineal muscular membranous duct that, unlike men, ensures urine excretion only. Thus, the urethral sphincter is, exclusively, the urinary continence sphincter. It has numerous pelvic and perineal relations and a pelviperineal blood supply.